and I'm going to start out. How many of you guys have played rock, paper, scissors? Rock, please. Okay. So watch this. I want you to watch this video. So this is Marvin, our robot. And Marvin is playing rock, paper, scissors with real people. And he is visualizing because he has to see what their hand signals are. He's processing all the data in the background so that he can analyze and do trade-off analysis. For instance, Marvin taught me that men, 80% of the time, when they play rock, paper, scissors, will start with the rock, with the power, with the force. So if you want to beat a man on your first time out, typically you can do paper and beat that man. And women, 80% of the time, start with scissors. So there's a lot of data, a lot of artificial intelligence that goes into this. In addition, when you start to play him, you type in your Twitter ID, and he analyzes the sentiment around who you are to also figure out how to play you. So these are just some of the elements of cognitive that we're seeing being used in the real world today. So a lot of folks, when they think about cognition, they think about just answering questions, Q&A. But there's so many different elements of cognitive, and I want to show you some of those today so that you can, again, see them just like you did with Marvin. So artificial intelligence, machine learning, or cognition is really helping uh, companies do language translation, do trade-off analysis, personality insight, a whole set of areas where you're seeing that cognition that we have today being used in different scenarios. So what I want to do is show you some really basic um, scenarios that you can try today. We have something called the Watson Developer Cloud, and you can go up and try that today as well. And I also have one of our very own startups in the room, uh, Prashant, who's the CEO of Alpha Modus, and he's going to show you a live demo of his code leveraging and using this. More complicated than what I'm going to show you because he's working in uh, financial services. So let me set up this example just to show some of the power of cognition. So what we're going to do here is we're going to leverage some of the visualization APIs. And we're going to teach Watson and train her to recognize pizza. I did say her, by the way. Um, now, think about that. So I was working with a small startup who really wanted to find out who was tweeting about their pizza to recognize their pies and then be able to take credit for all those great tweets. Think about how hard that is. So what we're going to do is we're going to input into a corpus of knowledge, which is the way that you train Watson. Watson's not just naturally smart. You have to have someone that trains her as you go along. And so we're going to put in 50 pictures of what pizza is, what it looks like, and then we're going to put in 50 pizza of what, pictures of what it's not. And then we're going to test her. So let me show you. If I could, just real quickly, here. Uh, is this a PDF? I hope not. Hmm. I'm sorry? It doesn't look. Yeah. It looks like it's, uh, let me just see, go back. Hmm. There should be a, um, nope, not on here. Yep. Nope. Mm -mm. No, this may be the PDF. No? Okay. Huh. Let's just try it and see if we can get the demo to work. There's nothing down here. That's a problem. I have it on mine. I have it on mine, too. Um, so how do we want to do this, guys? I have the demos on a computer, but for whatever reason, it's not loaded on this computer. Let me just try the next one to see if it's on this one. Nope. Oh, wait. There you go. We just can't see it. Okay. So I'm typing in pizza, and what you're seeing here is the positive image of the pizza and negative images of pizza. And then Watson is taking about four or five minutes to learn what the pizza looks like and recognizing that from a picture. 
And then we're going to test Watson. And you can see up here all different types of pizza. So we're going to select one and then have Watson tell us how confident she is in that score. So in this case, it's 65%. In this example, you can see it's actually a pan, a pizza pan with spaghetti and meatballs on it. And Watson says, no, that's not a pizza. Now, you could raise the confidence level of Watson by using more pictures, more training to get her better supplied in this particular area. But this is one of the ways that you can teach Watson about visualization. Now, how might you use this in a company? Uh, obviously, this is being used today by one of our startups. But an insurance company, for instance, when they're taking pictures, let's say you go out and you have an accident on your car and you take a picture, uh, we've got several insurance agencies who are testing this to say, you might not even have to describe the accident. You may not even have to tell what model of the car it is. Just from the picture, Watson will learn and be trained on model, year, what was the accident, and input all of that information for you as an example of how you might use that. Okay, let's go on to the next one. So that was using one of the visualization APIs. So the next API is around trade-off analysis. And again, Watson can learn what your ability is on trading off different elements of a decision. So think about how you made a decision about what to wear today. You said, oh, well, the weather's going to be so much, so hot. You want to dress up. You want to dress down. So there's lots of decisions that you make, and you use a weighted criteria. In this particular example, I'm going to stay again with that pizza example. And you can see here across the top, I have different criteria. Like, is the um, pizza good quality? Is it cheap? Is it located where I have a beautiful view, like this lovely office here? And then down the side, you can see I've got different uh, pizza parlors as well that are going on. So let me just try to kick this one off for us and see if we can get it going. Um, so let me see. I can't tell if it's going or not. Hmm. Nope, let me see. Nope. So unfortunately, it's not working on this particular computer. I don't. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So it went through all those trade-off scenarios, and what it's doing now is you can move and leverage the different elements of your decision-making criteria. Is it high quality food? Is it low quality food? What are you looking at to determine which restaurant you should go at? So one of my VCs was leveraging this and he was looking at, he wanted great quality pizza with a great view, but really cheap. And so we were trying to figure out what pizza place in San Francisco would be the best one for him. So it came up with this Jason's Gourmet Pizza. So imagine we've got some cellular companies leveraging technology like this to help you make decisions about your phone, battery life versus large screen versus what you're doing. Um, Prashant will also give you an example of how he's using this to make financial and asset management decisions as well. Okay, so let's go to the next example. And um, we will, there we go. So this one I really love. So in this particular example, I had a, a startup who was getting a lot of Yelp reviews. And they really wanted to know how to respond to the review, who was writing the review, who was leveraging it. So here I'm going to stick again with that pizza example. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a Yelp review, feed it in, and then Watson is going to analyze from the tone of the review different elements of personality, of values, of things that are important to that particular Yelp reviewer. So hopefully this will, uh, this will work this time. There we go. Okay, so you can take any text that you have, any speech, a Yelp review, you can take a Facebook post and input it into Watson. And then what Watson will do is learn about the personality and come up with a summary for you. So in this particular case, it gives me a summary about the person. It tells me that this person avoids taking risks. It goes through their personality and lets me know that they are someone who's cost conscious. So budgetary items like percentage discounts off will make a big difference to this person and showcases their values to me as well. 
And so it gives me insight into the person writing the review so that then I can also maybe figure out how I might want to respond to that review, which is what I'll show you next. Now imagine this for a retailer, being able to understand when you're getting ready to purchase something, let's say you've signed into the site with your Facebook account, and Watson would be able to analyze the personality and then be able to make recommendations about what you purchase based on your personality. We're seeing higher upsell and cross-sell from that versus just using past history or past, um, past performance. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, okay. So the last example that I wanted to use here was um, tone analysis. So now what we want to do is not just look at the words and the personality, but the tone in which that was also written. So what I've done here is I've done a response to that Yelp review, and Watson's going to analyze that based on the person who wrote it and provide me with feedback on the tone that I'm using to say, will this make that person satisfied with what's going on, or will this further anger them as we go forward? And you'll see the, uh, we'll see the output here as we, as we go. Okay, so let's try it here. What it's going to do is analyze that for me and look at the tone with which I wrote some of the words. So you can see it analyzes the language itself, the emotions with which I'm writing, and it's comparing that against the, you know, the person who wrote it, who had maybe some anger and how I responded to that anger or fear. Also look at different elements of the language. Did I go too high level, too low level? And then look at some of the social elements that that person had written in the Yelp review for me to be able to analyze my response. So think about this for customer service representatives and the way that you respond in customer service, there's really, really, I think, great power in using uh, tools like this. So hopefully this makes it real and what we're trying to accomplish with Watson. That was just four of the services that we have on Watson today, which is visualization. We looked at tone analysis, sentiment analysis, and trade-off analysis as well. Now you might think, well, that's great, but what about with a real company? And so we wanted to showcase today one of our favorite startups here in uh, New York, which is Alpha Modus. And Alpha Modus has done some really amazing things, leveraging the technology, has done some really nice sized deals based on the competitive advantage that this has given them. So what I'd like to bring up to the stage is uh, Prashant, the CEO of Alpha Modus, to talk to us a little bit about what they are doing. So please welcome him. Good afternoon, everybody. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Okay. So um, our company is Alpha Modus. We, uh, our mission is to reprice investment advice. The idea is that market complexity is outpacing uh, the human ability to process um, market behavior. So um, much of this complexity is being caused by the exponential growth in unstructured data. Uh, structured data being video, text, news, blogs, um, th these types of uh, 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 data generation are, are causing uh, humans uh, cognitive dissonance basically um, when it comes to making split second investment decisions in fast moving markets. So one thing that um, we do is we leverage Bluemix and Watson, we've been training Watson to help us parse complexity in markets, to build algorithms and we build these algorithms for asset managers. We price them according to how much alpha they generate. Alpha is the ability to beat market, um, the markets on a risk-adjusted basis. So what Sandy has teed up here is um, one, of our, uh, one of our strategies. Oh, do you want to know? It's on the right-hand side. OK. So what we're Got doing it? here is we're listening to uh, uh, market, market on close and balances. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I know. It's, it's different than the Apple. Here, let me just uh, Okay. Okay, wait. Okay. okay. Just press that, yeah. Okay. So we're, we're, we're using, we're, we've trained Watson, and one of the key things, one of the themes uh, I think that somebody was speaking about earlier was Einstein's quote, imagination is more important than knowledge. One of the key things about training Watson on a particular domain 
um, is, you know, we had to come up with 700 different types of questions uh, in natural language to ask Watson about market on closing balances. Um, it was a very niche kind of thing and really required a lot of imagination. Um, and one of the strategies that we came up with um, listens for market on closing balances, the um, uh, supply and demand uh, differential in uh, market on close order. So we're trying to predict the direction of the market into the close of trading. So um, uh, let's take a, a, a February 5th, 2016. The S&P 500 was dropping uh, precipitously, it's down about 1.85% into the close of trading. And, um, and we have, um, uh, we're, uh, we're using Watson to extract sentiment from news. In particular, on this day, uh, we see news, uh, um, uh, key headlines. Um, th this is extracted from a very large corpus of data in real time. And uh, some, some of the news is that uh, there's, um, the US economy is beginning to decelerate, Gold is gaining attention. Gold is well bid. Dollar weakness lifts gold. Shaky uh, global economy. Uh, the key concepts are there's weakness in oil, weakness in U.S. and, and uh, European central bank policy, but there seems to be a flight to safety into gold. The interesting thing is this actually ha uh, happens to coincide with strong buy imbalances in gold, weak uh, imbalances in um, uh, energy and U.S. equities. And, um, and uh, we'll just go right to the... How do I play this video? Yeah, I know. That's going to be a hard one. Let's see here. Yeah, you have to guess at it because you can't really see it. It's disappeared. Let's see. There okay, we go. Here. There we All go. right, so here, this is a $60,000 cash account, real money, um, levered 10 times intraday notionally. Um, you can see the orders being generated there on the right. Those are the executions. We're accumulating uh, positions here on, that, uh, on the left box. And um, you can see we have a 6,900 share position in a gold ETF. Um, it'll close out in just a few seconds. Um, but you can see in the top right corner, we traded 17,790 shares uh, since I played the video. And, um, and uh, we're, we're long uh, a gold ETF and we're short energy and, and US equities. And, um, and, and in the background, we're using Watson for, for cognitive analytics. Um, and you'll see us book a pretty decent return in just a second. And this, okay, so we made $1,062 uh, real money on 35,500 shares traded in 85 seconds. And this strategy actually works. I mean, we run it every day and now we've sold this, we, we're, we're running this with um, um, a professional fund to capacity of $40 million right now. Um, and it made over 12% on cash in in January 2016, so um, that's that's how we use Watson to find uh, alpha and unstructured data. Awesome, thank you. We can keep that. Okay. okay so um, you know what? Hopefully, what you've just seen is us using a lot of data. 80% of the data that companies have today is really invisible to them because they can't get to it. They don't use it. They don't leverage it. Much like what Prashant said, right? He found these hidden gold nuggets, pardon the play on words, all throughout what he was doing. And so leveraging software like Cognitive that helps you to learn, to understand what's going on, to difference in the, uh, in, the, in the marketplace. So let me just through these and get to the very end. So there are three ways that I think you can leverage this today. Um, you could leverage this. I, uh, first of all, we've got a ton of uh, Bruce Weed, who's in the room. Bruce, if you could raise your hand. He started a cognitive meetup here in New York City with about 25 people. I think you're now over 600 folks coming to the meetup today, and we'd love for you to try to come by and, and get to know more about cognitive. You can actually try out all these services that I just showed you yourself. Enter your own Twitter ID or take your own speech and analyze it if you go to the, the cognitive site. And then we also offer a lot of services. If you're a startup, we provide you with up to $120,000 of cloud services, which includes Watson, Cognitive, IoT, Internet of Things. But we also do more like provide go-to-market support. So Prashant 
was very humble, but he was just featured on an ad on, at the Masters. I don't know how many of you watched the Masters, but you probably saw him as a, a movie star, ad star there, uh, talking about Watson. And so that got a lot of exposure for Alpha Modus and his uh, company. We also just worked with Grush. I don't know if you, anybody watching America's Greatest Makers? Uh, Grush, one of our startups, is in the top five now in that particular competition as well. So if you join the program, it helps you not only with the technology that I've just shown you, but also with a lot of the go-to-market as well. So thank you guys for your time. Sorry the mic and the, and the systems are a little bit rough, but are there any quick questions before we have to exit that anybody has? Okay, thank you guys very much. Appreciate it.